Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the great privilege that we have today to come before you. Baba watin belorun adupe lowo yin fun anfani alai gbegbe ti a ni lati wa so ajun yin loni we thank you because of the witness in our hearts that we belong to you we are your children and we are interested in listening to your word we want to know what you want us to do adupe lowo yin fun idani loju ti a ni ninu okan wa pe awaji omo yin we thank you for the victory that you have given us in our lives. Thank you because of the evidences we see in our lives that we have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ and want to keep on going, moving on with you until we come to live with you in heaven forever. Well, thank you for the people who have gone before us in this journey, who have manifested great faith. And we thank you for the encouragement that their lives give unto us. We are praying, O Lord, that you will help us as you give us these challenges from their examples, that we too will live up to the expectation and manifest undeniable faith in your sight in Jesus' name. That the face that brings the victory will be in our heart as well. The face that makes us to conquer will be in our lives in Jesus' name. We pray, Lord, that we, as we look at these introductory verses today, we look at these introductory verses today, leading us to real strong faith. We pray that even from this night, you plant that faith in every heart of everyone hearing tonight, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We pray that your spirit will take these words we are going to read and hear and apply it to our hearts and bring forth faith in our hearts. Amen. Amen. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. We have come to the Bible study today. I want you to continue with the series or the chapters of the book of Hebrews, the epistle to the Hebrews we have been studying. We have gone by the grace of God from chapter 1 all through to chapter 10. What I say, particular subject that the apostle had been mentioning even from the beginning of the epistle. And he had said it from the beginning that those who do not have have that particular sin will not be able to enter into the land of Canaan and to the land of promise, the land of rest. It is the important subject of faith. Far back in chapter 4 verse 2. It tells us, For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not be mixed with faith in, the, in them that heard it. 
sugba oro ti won gbo ko se won ni ire nitori pe ko dapo mo igbagbo ninu awon ti o gbo he mentions the subject of faith there and he said that the people that have the word before us and did not benefit and did not produce the fruit the very reason is that the word did not mix with faith in their hearts o menu ba koko igbagbo ninu ese yi pe awon asiwaju wa awon ti won ti lo siwaju ti won ko janfani ninu awon nkan ti won gbo oni nto sokun fa re ni pe oro ti won gbo yi ko dapo mo igbagbo ni okan won in the previous chapter chapter 3 verse 19 ninu ori to saju ori keta ese ikokan ni said so we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief oni awa si ri pe won ko le wo inu re nitori aigbagbo again he was telling them that because of the lack of faith that one's faith is missing that the people who are hearing will not be able to enter into the provision of the lord for them ni lo to so gba ngba wi pe i see igbagbo ninu okan nitori pe igbagbo je won awa ti ninu okan won awon to ba ngbo oro na won ko ni le wo nu ibukun ti oluwa ti pese sile fun won he was talking of the ultimate land of canaan the land of promise that they were not able to enter in because of unbelief o so ni pa canaan ti ayiraye ele to je olubori gbogbo re wi pe awon eniyan na ti won gbo oro na won ko le wo nu re it is applicable to every promise of god we cannot enter into the provision promised by god if there is the lack of faith eleyi pa pa ni se pelu gbogbo ileri olorun ko ni se se fun wa lona kona lati le wonu awon ileri olorun ti a ba si align ni igbagbo he moves on to tell us that faith is a foundation stone is a is one of the first principles of the kingdom of god o tesi waju lati fi ma aye wa gba gba wi pe igbagbo ni opo muleru tabi ipile lori gbogbo nkan ti ijobo olorun ran mo in chapter 6 verse 1 ni ori kefa ese ike ni living there the prince living there for the principles of the doctrine of christ let us go on on to perfection not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward god nitori na ki a fi ipile se eko christi sile ki a lo si pipe le ai to fi ipile runuku ada kuro ninu oku ise lele ati ti igbagbo si pa ti olorun yeah he tells us that faith is foundational ni lo fi ye wa gba gba pe ipile ni igbagbo je it is from that spring board of faith towards god we move on onto perfection lati so so a koko so igbagbo yi nibe la sin test waju lo si waju olorun ni bi pe chapter 6 verse 12 ninu ori kefa ese ikeji la that she be not slothful but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises ki e ma se di oni lora sugbon alafarawe awon ti won ti pa igbagbo ati suru jogun awon ileri once again he tells us that we need to have faith and we need to pray and then with faith and patience we're going to inherit all the promises of the lord o so fun wa ni igbagba pe ani lo igbagbo ki agbadura igbagbo ati suru nipa re a o le jogun awon ileri and now he has taking time to tell us the difference between the old covenant and the new covenant o si ti fa aye sile lati salaye re yeke yeke fun wa iyato tin be laarin ma je mo lai lai ati ma je mo tun tun it tells us in the new covenant there is a new and living way o so fun wa pe nu ma je mo ti tun ona ti tun ona iye wa and then he is calling us to full assurance of faith ni bayi o wa npe wa si idani loju igbagbo in chapter 10 reading from verse 22 ninu ori ke wa ese ikeji le logo let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith eje ki a fi otito kan sun matosi ni ekun igbagbo in verse 23 ni ese keta le logo let us hold fast to the profession of our faith without wavering eje ki a di jewo iriti wa musisin laisi yemeji once again is reminding us of the importance of faith like kan si lo tun ran wa leti se pataki igbagbo it tells us not to waver 
He tells us not to doubt. He tells us to hold on firmly to the very end by faith. He reminds us in verse 38, now the just shall live by faith. Having said all that about faith, and knowing the importance of faith, he now wants to settle down and really lead us into real faith in the Lord. And I pray that as you come week after week, as we're going to look at this chapter of faith, that your faith will grow in the Lord in Jesus' name. Faith can only be built on the world. And Christ is a living world. And it is on that surest foundation we can build the purest faith. Already you understand the greatness and the glories of Christ. You understand the perfection and the priesthood of Christ. You understand the full submission and the final sacrifice of Christ. From that solid foundation of the living word of Christ himself, now we can build on the word of faith. And I believe that as you look at Christ more and you believe him more, you are going to have your faith developed in Jesus' name. The Jewish people of Paul's days, they had a tendency of depending upon their own world. And therefore they couldn't understand the emphasis on faith. That's why the apostle now takes time in chapter 11. And he tells them that right from Abel unto Enoch unto Noah unto Abraham unto Sarah and Isaac and, I, and Jacob and Joseph and Moses and David and Gideon and Samson and Samuel and all the prophets that all of them they received a good report on the basis of their faith in the Lord and if it was so in the old covenant that faith was a central in indispensable essential thing. How much more now we come to the new covenant? It is still based on faith. Today we are looking at chapter 11 verses 1, 2 and 3. And these three verses were divided into three parts. Number one, the definition of faith. Look at verse one. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. That's the definition of faith. Number two, declaration approving men of faith. Look at verse two, for by it the elders obtained a good report. The art approval from God. On what basis did they have approval from God? On the basis of faith 
for by it, that is by faith, those elders, the patriots, they obtained a good report. Lori igbagbo ni tori o pe ni tori ninu re, iyan ni ninu igbagbo ni awon alagba, awon baba nla, awon asiwaju wa se gba erirere. That's declaration approving men of faith. Eleyi ni kede ti a se nipa awon ni igbagbo ti won koju osun won. Number 3 is discernment through faith. Iketa ni imoye nipa igbagbo. When we say you discern something you perceive something, you understand something, you know it, you know it by faith. In verse 3, through faith, we understand, we know, we perceive, we discern that the walls were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Let's go to point number one now. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. That's the definition of faith. Or you may want to call it the description of faith. It's telling us what faith is. It also goes on to tell us what faith does. Look at it. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. It means you have not got that thing in reality. You are hoping for it. You are looking at it afar off. You see it in the word of God. You see it in the promise of God. But you have not got it. Your faith is the reality and the substance and the confidence that you already have it, although you are hoping for it. That's why that faith is the evidence of things not seen. You have not seen it. You are not handling it. It is not present with you. But you have faith that your faith is the receipt you are holding in your hand. It is the evidence you are having with you that that thing you have not seen will definitely be yours. That's faith. That's why how can you be so sure when you have not got it you have only read it in the word of God you have only seen it in the promise of God but the reality the substance is not really in your hand how can you be so sure Titus chapter 1 verse 2 In hope of eternal life which God that cannot lie promised before the world began now you will see here there is a God that God made a promise he made that promise before the world 
begun. And the promise concerned eternal life. And men and women were hoping to have eternal life. And the word of God, what the word of God is telling us here, before Jesus Christ, the author and the source of eternal life, before he came to the world, the Father in heaven had made the promise. And people were hoping and hoping and expecting that he, the one that gives eternal life, that he will come. And before he came, they were sure he will come. He that shall come will come and will not tarry. Why were they so sure? Because in verse 2, God cannot lie. Once you believe in your heart, I've read it in the word of God, I've seen it in the promise of God, God cannot lie. That's faith in your heart. He has promised salvation, he cannot lie. He has promised eternal life, he cannot lie. He has promised sanctification, he cannot lie. He has promised healing and deliverance, he cannot lie. He promised provision, my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. He cannot lie. Casting all your cares upon him because he careth for you. He cannot lie. You will seek me, you will find me when you search for me with all your heart. He cannot lie. I will never leave you, I will never forsake you. He cannot lie. Ask and it shall be given unto you. Seek and you shall find not and it shall be open unto you. He has promised he cannot lie. Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 18. Hebrews 6 verse 18. That by two immutable things in the which it was impossible for God to lie. We have we we might that we might have a strong consolation. Pe nipa o wa le yi pa da meji ni no e yi ti ko le se se fun olorun lati se ke ki a wa ki o sa sabe si abe abu impossible for God to lie. You know because of that impossibility, if you read anything in the promise of the word of God, he will do it. That's why you have confidence and consolation and you totally lean upon him and rely upon him. You read the promises of God. Some bad thoughts are coming to your mind. Your, your thoughts may change and your thoughts may not be stable, but we know something about God. He remains the same, even though your thoughts may change, because God cannot lie. Isaiah chapter 55 and verse 11. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please. And it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I sent it. 
ki yo pada so do mi lofo sugbon yo se eyi ti o wu mi yo ma serere ninu ti mo ran you see you understand that the words of men may change but the word of god will not change o ye ti ye ogban gba pe oro awon eniyan adari hun wa ma yi pada sugbon oro olorun ko le yi pada men may give you a promise and then they change their mind when god gives you a promise and there are those promises and the word of god he will not change awon eyan le bo sade nkun won fun oni le ri ki won yi pada sugbon olorun to ba ti soro ninu oro re ko you may come to those men and present before them the promises they gave you before and they say i'm sorry i don't have the means of fulfilling that promise now when i gave you that promise i felt i could do it but i'm a human being i cannot do it now forget about it God will never do that to you. Ni ti o me niyan, iwe ade ti won bi se le ri lati fi olokan bale pe awon o se ti bi ton fun e to ba mu de waju won, won le ma toru afori yin pe igba ti mo se ade o yi, mo ro pe yo se se fun mi ni sugbon, mo bi nu o ko se se sugbon ni to Olorun ko le se be. He says so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. O ni be ni oro ti o ti enu mi jade yo ri. The word of God comes out of his mouth. It is inspired of God. Did you say he will save you and your house? It came out of his mouth. Did he say that through Christ you will conquer? He came out of his mouth. Did he say that no sparrow will fall to the ground except with his knowledge and that your best Very ears are all numbered that nothing bad will happen to you. He came out of his mouth. Did he, did he say he will take care of the orphan, he will take care of the widow, it came out of his mouth, he cannot deny himself. It shall not return unto me void, it shall accomplish that which I please. That's the basis of our faith. Because actually faith is believing the word and the testimony of God. Faith is a firm persuasion that I know that my God will not lie. It is the assurance within the believer that the power of God is there and the faithfulness of God will never change. Faith is counting on the ability and the fidelity of God who has promised and who cannot lie, who cannot change. It means then you are relying on the promises of God. And you are expecting the accomplishment and the fulfillment of them. And it is that faith that gives certainty, that gives assurance, that gives confidence, that gives reality to the thing you are still hoping for and the things you have not seen. It is a sure ground upon which you are standing that even when the wind is blowing and when the storm is there, you know that God will not disappoint. You can rest upon him and you will not be disappointed in Jesus' name. Faith does not wait to see before he believes. In John chapter 20, the Lord, te- the Lord tells us the importance of, s- of believing so that we can see. In John chapter 20, reading from verse 24. But Thomas, one of the twelve called Didymus, uh, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, Except I shall see in his hand the print of 
the nails and put my finger into the print of the nails and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. <laughs> The Lord had said that he will rise up on the third day. Faith should have said he cannot lie, he will rise up. Other disciples have given testimony as he said he has happened. He has risen up. He should have believed that God who cannot lie, the God of all power, the God of faithfulness, he has done according to what he promised he should have believed but he did not believe he said, except I see. In verse 20 says, And after eight days, again his disciples were within, and Thomas was with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst and said, Peace be unto you. Then says he to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands, reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side, and be not faithless but believing. Jesus said, Thomas, you are looking for evidence. Reach out your finger and touch and see. But Thomas now immediately he saw the Lord. He didn't even worry again or bother again to put his finger anywhere, thrust his hand anywhere. He now said, I believe. Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord, my God. Jesus says unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed, blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. Jesus we for Thomas, Once you are given the promise of God, once you read the promise of God, take that promise of God to Him in prayer. This is what you said in your word. You cannot lie. You cannot deny your word. You cannot deny the name of Jesus. Even though I have not seen the fulfillment, I believe. It will be unto you according to your faith. Acts chapter 27. Reading from verse 25. Acts 27, 25. You remember here, Paul the apostle was in the ship with other people and their lives were in danger. God sent an angel to him to assure him no life will be lost. And see the attitude of Paul the apostle. Chapter 27 verse 25. Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God that it shall be even as it was told me. 
Nitori mo gba Olorun gbo pe yo ri be gege bi o ti so fun I believe it will be as it was told me Mo gba gbo pe yo ri be gege bi a ti so fun mi No same thing so I've heard it will be as you were told I want kan won ni to ti gbo bo ti gbo na ni yo se ri We just finished a retreat uh, yesterday As I said pa ri ipagon ni ana ni and uh, your own is coming Ipagon ti si mo lo na I said your own is coming Mo ni ipagon ti mo lo na we we finished uh, Friday night uh, on Friday night, uh, when we prayed, uh, we just, uh, you know, prayed for the people. And I needed to leave that place so that I could get myself prepared. Not only that, I needed to walk on the an outline of the Bible study. So after praying for them, I left uh, the pulpit so that I could continue writing the outline. And so the camp commandant took over. And I was just telling them, shouting and praising the Lord. The following day, I asked him, I said, I couldn't concentrate on all you were saying. I was just telling, praise the Lord. This one will shout there, this one will shout here. They are very busy. What were they shouting about? Tell me some of the details. <laughs> And then he said, I will give you all the right up. And then he brought the right up to me. More than 200 in one single night. And among those 200, more than five people that their eyes were totally blind before and their eyes open. And then on Saturday night we continued and uh, in fact the way it was, they couldn't stop the testimony. They said they were eating and giving testimony at the same time. It was very wonderful. For the point I want to make for you is this. Because Paul the Apostle said, I believe God, it shall be as it was told me. One of the moderators told the people, I think when we were about finishing, he said, don't think you have not got what you want. He said, anywhere you are, as you are going, the miracle is there already. And so Sunday yesterday, we are drowned up around 11 o'clock. And then they said, please uh, help us uh, wash plates in the kitchen, help Help us do this, help us do that. And one of the people that came for the retreat, he saw that uh, some were going to the kitchen to watch plays. He was deaf, he was uh, partially dumb. And uh, so he followed them to the washing place. Uh, just washing place. Remember, retreat has finished. All the prayers have been prayed. The others were going on home. The people remaining now are people cleaning up and uh, sweeping and taking care of things. All of a sudden, while they were washing plates, this uh, fellow there and partially dumb, he just uh, got up, stopped the plate washing and said, praise the Lord. And the all the other people stopped uh, washing plates and they spoke to him. He, he answered them and said, praise the Lord, hallelujah. 
nigba ti awon eya gbo ariwo re won da wo ise ti won se duro won wa ba soro o ni eyin oluwa logo e ki hallelujah everybody start washing place and they began to praise the lord gbogbo eyan wa da se awodi people duro won wa yin olorun logo it will be as it was told you you read gege bi ati so fun the moderator there said even though you think you have not got it we have ended the miracle is there and the miracle was there en to nsa ko so ijo sin ni ojo yen o so pe bo ti le ro ko ti gba se ya nu na ise ya nu na wa nbe ise ya nu na si wa nbe believe it will be unto you according to your faith iwo sa agbagbo yo ri fun o gege bi ipa ko re corinthians reading from chapter 4 corinthi keji ori ikerin in second corinthians chapter 4 verse 13 corinthi keji ori ikerin ese iketala please turn the cassette over we have the same spirit of faith according as it is written i believe therefore have i spoken we also believe therefore we speak awale emi igbagbo kan na gege bi ati ko pe emi igbagbo nitori na ni emi se so awa pelu gbagbo nitori na ni awa se so there is a spirit of faith emi igbagbo wa the attitude of faith you wa si igbagbo the thought of faith ero igbagbo the disposition of faith ise igbagbo within you in your mind in your heart in your soul knowing that this god of heaven he is so holy he is so faithful he cannot lie ninu okan re ninu emi re ninu re lohun gbagbo okan re si bale wi pe olorun to se da yi ohun orun o mo ko le seke and he says we believe therefore we are spoken the speech and the language of faith oni awa pelu gbagbo nitori na ni awa se nso yen ni pe won ma nso oro igbagbo that's the kind of faith that visualizes the invisible the unseen iru igbagbo yi lo ma nfoju nu wo nti a ko foju ri you shut your eyes to all the things around you and you open your ears to only what god I say wa di eti re si gbogbo ariwo tin lo laye ka re wa wa si okan re paya si unti olorun so and you will have the victory wa si di asego i said you will have the victory mo ni wa ni isego no matter the problems in the past o to ru ko je wa la la te yi wa the day from the moment you begin to manifest faith everything will change la to ojo to ba ti bere si fi igbagbo soju ise ni o n gbogbo yo yi pada even from tonight everything will change and la ta le lo n gbogbo yo yi pada to Hebrews chapter 11 verse 2 Already we have seen verse 1 Now faith is a substance it is a reality of things hoped for nge igbagbo ni idani loju ohun ti an re ti it is the evidence of things not seen igeri ohun ti akori that's the definition the description of faith elei gan ni apejuwe tabi alaye igbagbo now see the declaration approving the main of faith wo wa wo si so tabi ikede ti a se nipa awon ni igbagbo ti won For by it that is by faith the elders obtained a good report nitori ninu re iyan ni ninu igbagbo ni awon alagba ti ni erirere what did he mean by the elders ki lo so nipa awon alagba yi the patriarchs of the old testament awon baba nla ninu ma je mu lai lai prophets of the old testament awon woli ma je mu lai lai the people of the old testament awon iran ma je mu lai lai they said those people 
those elders, they received a good report, a well done from the Lord on the basis of their faith. People like Abel, the Lord testified about him because of his faith. Like Enoch, the Lord translated him because of his faith. Like Abraham, the Lord called him his friend because of his faith. Like Moses, the Lord did wonderful things through him and then approved of him and said, My servant Moses is not so. I speak to him face to face, mouth to mouth. The Lord approved him because of his faith. You see, when it says their faith, it means their faith produced something. Because what their faith produced is the evidence that they really had faith. The faith of Enoch produced working consistently with God. The faith of Noah produced obedience to what God has said. The faith of Abraham made him to leave the idolatrous land and made him to offer his only son unto the Lord. The faith of Moses made him to forsake earthly privileges and he was acting as if he saw the invisible. All those things demonstrated their faith. And it made God to testify of them. And look at some of them. The elders that obtained a good report by faith. In Numbers chapter 12, Numbers chapter 12, reading from verse 6, 7, ah. and verse 8. And you will see the approval of God for Moses. And he said, Hear now my words. If there be a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known unto him in a vision and will speak unto him in a dream. My servant Moses is not so, who is faithful in all mine house. O we pay bambe you see, because of his faith and what his faith produced, the Lord testified about him and the Lord approved him. With him will I speak mouth to mouth, even apparently, and not in that speeches. And the similitude of the Lord shall he behold. And you see very clearly there the testimony of God concerning him. In Numbers chapter 14, we have God's approval, good report concerning Caleb. Numbers chapter 14, verse 24. But my servant Caleb, because he had another spirit with him, and had followed me fully, him will I bring into the land wherein he went, and his seed shall possess it. Numbers chapter 14, verse 24. 
only a mio mola sino ile na nibiti o tiri iru amare ni yosi ni you see how the lord approved of that man because of his faith ori bi olorun se jere ni pa okunrin yi ni tori igbagbo re when the others were manifesting unbelief nigbati awon kan fi igbagbo han and they were saying we be not able to go up and possess the land o won so pe awa ko le lo lati gba ile na he was saying that the lord be with us their bread unto us the lord will go with us we are well Able. If you will manifest face like that, God will approve of your word, approve of your action, approve of your life, and God will support you and sustain you. Ezekiel chapter 14 verse 14 See how the Lord even mentioned the names of some people By faith God approved those people and they obtained a good report Ezekiel 14 14 though these three men Noah, Daniel and Job were in it they should deliver but their own souls by their righteousness says the Lord Daniel at Job ti le wa ninu re kike emi ara won ni won yo fi ododo won gbala le oluwa olorun o see how god mentioned their names and god separated friend them from the generality of the israelites he approved of them because of their life the life of faith ori bi olorun ti daruko won ti olorun ta won yo ti o yo won soto laarin gbogbo mutumu wa ni israel you see the people that were mentioned there. Let's see other people that were also mentioned in Jeremiah chapter 15, verse 1. Verse 1 it says, Then saith the Lord unto me, Though Moses and Samuel stand before me, yet my mind could not be towards these people cast them out of my sight and let them go for oluwa se fun mi pe bi mose ati samuel duro ni waju mi sibe inu mi ki yo yi pada si awon eniyan yi sawanti kuro ni waju mi ki won ki o si jade lo now you will see that god approved of samuel and of moses they were men of faith ori pe olorun jeri nipa samuel ati moses tori pe wa ji okunrin onigbagbo and when you come to hebrews chapter 11 to ba wa re ko ja si ebero ori kokan la you will see other elders other people that the lord mentioned and he approved them because of their faith wa ri awon alagba miran ti a in verse 4 we have the mention the approval of Abel verse 5 Enoch was approved verse 7 Noah was approved verse 8 Abraham was approved and then we are also told of Sarah in verse 11 she too was approved because of her faith Verse 20, Isaac. Verse 21, Jacob. Verse 22, Joseph. Verse 23, we have Moses. And then in verse 29, we have the children of Israel, many of them. Verse 31, Rahab. And then you have in verse 32, Barak and Gideon and Samson and Jephthah and David and Samuel and of the others many others also Samson Jephthah 
Daphidi, Samueli, ati awon woli lai moye. I pray the Lord will approve of you like that. Mo ngba adura pe ki Olorun ko jeri won na be. There are five things you need to notice or maybe even see if God is going to approve of your life like that. Awon nkan ma ro tabi mefa lo lati kiesi ti Olorun yo ba jeri si igbe aye re. Number 1, you need to have the life of faith. Akoko ni pe o gbodo ni igbe aye igbagbo. Galatians chapter 2 verse 20. Galatia ori keji ese ogo. I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. Whatever is not of faith is sin. Live the life of faith. Base your confidence on the promises of God. Know that your God is a faithful God. Don't be afraid like the people of the world who do not have God. Don't bring yourself as a part of the people of the world that have no protection. Don't live the way they are living because of their doubt, because of their unbelief. You are special in the sight of God. Live the life of faith. Number two is the walk of faith. In Second Corinthians chapter five verse seven. For we walk by faith and not by sight. That is, uh, you look around you in your community or in your house or in your family and you say, I don't have this, don't walk by sight. I don't have this, don't walk by sight. I don't have this, don't walk by sight. Don't take all your decision based on only what you can see. Base your decisions on your God who is able to supply all your needs according to his riches in glory and walk by faith. <laughs> Number three is the obedience of faith. Romans chapter chapter one verse five. By whom we have received grace and apostleship for the obedience to the faith among all nations for his name. The Lord will challenge you to obey Him. If you look at your natural self, if you look at your inexperience, if you look at your weakness, you will not rise up and obey the Lord. You'll say, I am weak. You'll say, I'm a new convert. You'll say, I am not that strong. You'll say, they will make fun of me. But if you rise up by faith, and you are depending not upon your strength, but upon his own strength, you will have the obedience of faith. If you look at your own self, you'll say, I cannot bear that. I cannot endure that. I know myself. I know who I am. I don't want to deceive myself. You are basing your obedience on what you know about yourself. Base your obedience on what you know about God. Who says he will help you? He will support you. He will give you strength. Walk in the strength of the Lord. Number 
da wo duro lati ma rin nipa ara re sugbon ma rin nipa igboran si olorun en ti o le fun e lokun ma rin nipa number 4 is the spirit of faith e kerin ni emi igbagbo in second corinthians chapter 4 verse 13 ninu corinth keji ori kerin ese iketala we having the same spirit of faith awa ni emi igbagbo kan na you discover there is a problem around you o sa ki esi pe wa la wa la yika the devil will throw some thoughts in your heart that will try to shake you and destabilize you within yourself recall a promise of the Lord so you can have the mind the spirit and the thought of faith Number five is the language of faith. It is in that same verse, according as it is written, I believe, therefore have I spoken. We also believe, therefore we speak. When all the other ten people were speaking evil and they were speaking negative, Caleb and Joshua kept on basing their language not on just what they saw, on God. And they said, We be well able, language of faith. <laughs> When everybody was afraid of Goliath, and Goliath was even cursing David that he will kill him, and he cursed him by his God. David kept on saying, I come to you in the name of the Lord. I will overcome you. I will defeat you. Language of faith. When a servant of Elijah was afraid, Elisha rather, Elisha kept on saying, Greater are the ones with us than they that be with them. O Lord, open his eyes that he may see. Language of faith. As you speak that language of faith, the Almighty God will confirm your word. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 3. Discernment through faith. Through faith, we understand that the walls were framed by the watch of God so that the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. This is telling us we were not there when God made the world. But we know that he made the world. We understand he created the world. We know that this beautiful world cannot just come out of itself without somebody behind it that made it. You have been wrist watch in your hand there so ni agwa wani oran wani i said you have wrist watch in your hand you may not know the manufacturer, but did he just grow up like a, like a maze, growing out of the ground? Somebody made it. Somebody manufactured it. The same thing, this beautiful world that is so regular, and everything is going on in a regulated manner, Almighty God made the world. We already know that. 
much for the things we need to understand about the creation of the world. It's what this verse is telling us so that the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. That is, God, without having any raw material, he fabricated, he created, he made everything we see now. God is greater than man. A manufacturer needs raw material before he can fabricate and manufacture what he is making. A carpenter needs wood before he will make the table. And the builders need the sand and all that before they can make the blocks and build the house. Human beings, they need material things before they can produce something. Our God does not need raw material. I said our God does not need raw material. Don't you see in the wilderness for 40 years how the children of Israel were eating? There was no planting. There was nothing from which God was bringing out the food. He just brought it down to them. That same God will supply your need. Don't you see Elijah when the whole nation was in the famine? In the morning, by the time after he finishes quiet time, the bird will bring cake. And then he'll drink water. Where was the bird getting the cake? Because the people in town, they didn't have anything to eat. God does not need raw material before he provides for your need. He will provide for you. Have you not seen the children of Israel when they needed water to drink and there was nobody to dig well and there was nobody to make borehole and then they were before the rock and God said strike that dry rock I don't need water inside there before water comes out and water came out for millions of people ah uh ah -uh, the God who fetch and also get drink to two million, three million people. How about your little family of five or six? How about your children? How about your own self? I say that this God out of nothing. There is no job. There is no helper. There is no benefactor. There is no husband or there is no this. There is no that. This same God can still provide adequately for you. <laughs> How how did he do it? Psalm 33 verse 9. Psalm 33 verse 9. For he spake and it was done. He commanded and it stood fast. Has that God changed? Has that God changed? We are told in Philippians chapter 4 verse 19. Philippians chapter 4 verse 19. And this is the unchanging word of God. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Now, 
Some people say, I don't understand what I will do. By faith, we understand. I don't understand where this will come from. By faith, we understand. I don't know how my children will be educated. By faith, we know that God creates everything out of nothing. How will I go through this year? Look at me. Look at my situation. By faith, we understand that God will take care of you. You will eat. You will be fed. You will be taken care of even more than the people that say they have job. I don't know how I will be healthy. If uh, they tell me to come to the hospital now, there's no money to pay. How will I live my life? By faith, we understand that you'll be healthier than the people that are family doctors. If you believe God tonight, and you keep on believing, Believing God from tonight. All the negative things in your life, the Lord will wash everything away with the blood of His Son. Let's rise up and believe the Lord and tell the Lord, I believe. I am not waiting to see it before I believe it. I believe. I am not uh, waiting for anything to feel before I believe, I believe. He will take care of you. He will solve your problem. He will save you if you are not saved yet. He will sanctify you if you are not sanctified. He will baptize you with the Holy Ghost. He will provide for all your needs. He will sustain your life. He will take care of you. But I I don't see anything. Out of nothing, God can bring out everything. No job. Yet he can feed you. No wife yet. He will provide for you. No husband yet. He will bring the husband. No children yet. They say that my womb is dry. I cannot bring forth a child. Don't listen to them. Listen to the word of God. Out of nothing, he will bring out something. He will provide for you. He will take care of you. He will do everything that needs to be done in your life. Don't be discouraged, my brother. Don't turn back, my sister. Have a good report from the Lord by your faith. Have a good report from the Lord by your faith. Have a good report from the Lord by your faith. It is your faith that will recommend you to go. It is your faith that will give you a good report before the Lord. Live the life of faith. Walk the walk of faith. Manifest the obedience of faith. Have the spirit of faith. Use the language of faith. Take the step of faith. Step by step by step. Let every step be the step of faith. You are a child of God. Rely on Him. You are a child of God. Rely on Him. In the midst of the storm, rely on Him. In the midst of family trouble, rely on Him. 
In a time of temptation, rely on Him. In a time of poverty and need, rely on Him. In a time of hunger, rely on Him. In a time of scarcity, rely on Him. When the enemies are bragging and threatening, rely on Him. Be God, it will be as you were told in the word of God. I believe God. It shall be as it was told me. I believe God. It shall be as it was told me. Believe the word of God. He will not fail. He will not fail. He will not fail. He creates, he makes everything out of nothing. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Faith is grabbing the promise of God and refusing to let it go. The wind may blow, you hold on to that promise, I will not let it go. Amen. Amen. Enemies may threaten and brag, you hold on to that promise, you will not let it go. There is no food at home, there is no oil, there is no money, you don't know where food will come from tomorrow, you hold on to the promise of God, you will not let it go. Don't Doctors report is telling you this is impossible, this cannot be, you cannot have this, you cannot have that. You hold on to the promise of God, you will not let it go. Your parents, your in-laws, they are saying, we have decided, this is it, this is it, this is it, and nothing is contrary to you. You hold on to the promise of God, you will not let it go. Your neighbors are trying to insult you. They are making fun of you. There you are. There you are. You have not got this. You have not got that. You will not be discouraged. You hold on to the promise of God. You will not let it go. Your body is telling you that you are sick. Your body is telling you that you are weak. You are becoming afraid as if you may die. You hold on to the promise of God, you will not let it go. Your 
eru si n ba kan re sugbon iwo di ile ri olorun mu mo se foya ma je ki o lo hold on to the promise of god and don't let it go iwo di ile ri olorun mu mo se fi sile lati je ki o lo That is pain. And you will find that you have a good report from heaven. You have a good testimony from heaven. It will be unto you according to your faith. In Jesus name we pray. Ni oruko Jesus ni agbadura. I want you to hold on to one promise of God in your mind. Mo fe ki o di ileri Olorun kan mu ninu okan re. Promise of God claim it in your mind. Ileri Olorun yen ba ninu okan re. Make up your mind you will not let it go. Pe ninu okan re pe o ni je ki ileri yi o lo. And God is going to fulfill it in your life. Olorun yo si mu ileri yen se ninu aye re. In Jesus name we pray. Ni oruko Jesus ni Why you are holding on to that promise? Bo se ndi ile ri na mu. We are going to pray together. Aju mo gbadura papo. And God is going to fulfill it. Olorun yo si mu se. Father in the name of Jesus. Baba ni oruko Jesus. We thank you because of what we have learned tonight. Adupe lowo yin ni pan ti akola leyin. You have called us to the life of faith. E ti pe wa sini igbe aye igba mo. You have challenged us to believe in you. E ti pe wa ni ja pe ka gba yin gbo. To look away from the past that is filled and destroyed by unbelief. Ele to je pe aigba gbo ti ba gbogbo re je patapata. Lord we start a fresh tonight. To begin to live the life of faith. To begin to speak the language of faith. Lord, forgive us of all the negative thought, all the negative language, all the negative action, all the negative decisions we took in the past. In Jesus' name. Awon oro to lodi awon ipinu to lodi ti a ti gbe tele lati iwa ni oruko Jesus Now we believe you Baye agbayin go Now we believe you Baye agbayin go We are holding on to your promise And dear awon ile ri You know you are faithful God A ma ko lododo ni You know you will not fail A ma pe o le ku na I pray for all my brothers all my sisters everyone here tonight and I pray O oh Lord you will do good unto them in Jesus name Oluwa mo n gbadura fun awon arakunrin ati arabirin mi ati gbogbo awon to wa ni bi keko yin lalai e serere fun won ni oruko Jesus I pray O oh Lord that this This word they have had, we have all had tonight, will produce faith, strong faith, unshakable faith, faith that cannot be denied in the heart of everyone. In Jesus' name. Amen. I pray that you grant salvation and eternal life to those who are depending upon you turning away from their sins right now in Jesus name. Those who have been passing through temptation and it appears that the devil is just after them, after them, and after them. I pray, O oh Lord, you strengthen them and make them to stand in Jesus' name. To da bi eni pe awon nikan ni esu wa dojuko to n tele won ni gbogbo oju aye won Oluwa mo gbadura pe ki e fun won loko ki won ki o ma se pada seyin ni oruko Jesus Every discouragement in the heart of anyone I pray O oh Lord you sweep it away you blow it away and make them strong in faith right now in Jesus name Gbogbo idayafo to ti wa ninu okan eni keni ni Oluwa mo gbadura pe gbogbo re pata There's any sickness on anyone, O oh Lord. Yes, I have told us that you are the Lord that heals us. I pray, O oh Lord, your healing touch will come upon everyone right now. Heal them in Jesus' name. Mo n gbadura Oluwa pe owo e mu lara da yin 
any affliction, any oppression on the on the body, on the on the mind, in the family of anyone. I pray, O oh Lord, all those afflictions and oppressions of the devil, take it away from them in Jesus' name. Father, I pray that you provide for your people. For those who are afraid, how am I going to pay house rent? How will I eat? How will I educate my children? God of all provision. The God of all supply. I pray that in your miraculous way, you will supply for every need of your children in Jesus' name. For those who don't have any job, provide just for them. For those who have jobs but they are not getting much and uh, the people are owing them, they will not pay. I, pay. I pray, oh Lord, you touch the hearts of those people, they will pay their debts to them and you will provide a bonnet for your children in Jesus' name. Oluwa mo gbadu ape gbogbo awon ni gbese yen e lo fowo kan won ki won wa so gbese won ki ipese ko wa sinu aye awon omo yin ni oruko Jesus for those who are afraid of their lives awon teru aye won ba as if maybe the devil may take their life bi eni pe esu fe gbe mi won as if the circumstances around may take their life bi eni pe aye da ida tin be lai ta mo be i pray you drive out that spirit of fear from your children in Jesus name gbadu ape ki e le emi beruku oninu and I pray that perfect protection will come upon every brother, every sister, and upon their children, upon their family here in this place in Jesus' name. I pray that they promise they are claiming which they are holding on to and they will not let it go you will fulfill it in every one of your children in Jesus name I pray that a new life of faith will begin for everyone and your abundance will just be flowing into their lives and from this moment on O oh Lord the life will live now will be a life of confidence in the Lord. Make things better for everyone, O Lord. Thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray.